Hello and welcome to the program. This is Vivica Williams and you're watching Head to Head. Since the 2014 Euromaidan revolution, Ukraine has been fighting a wave of fake news and media manipulation instigated by Russia. Today, we want to talk about what progress Ukraine has made during 2017 to counteract this propaganda. And one of the best ways to counter out propaganda is through positive media. So we'll talk today about what more needs to be done and what has been done. To speak with us about this, we're joined in the studio by Artom Bedinsko. The, he's from the Ministry of Information Policy of Ukraine. Thank you very much for being with us today, Artom. It was nice to meet you. It, it is nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> and we spoke earlier about the message that the Ministry of Information hopes to put out when we talk about countering propaganda. Well, the slogan, the message of ministry, our motto is uh, that the best counter-propaganda is truth. And uh, we are working hard on creating some positive images, positive messages about what is going on in Ukraine and what uh, is going on with reforms in Ukraine. Because we have a very big problem in our society mm -hmm. of uh, dialogue between uh, victories and uh, losers. Uh, Peremohe and Zrade, mm -hmm. we call them here. And uh, there is a very huge impact of Russian propaganda in Absolutely. creating uh, unreal losers, in creating an, an unreal conflicts inside mm -hmm. Ukraine. And we do a lot of things to overcome this uh, crises which are not real, which are fake. Absolutely. So uh, to overcome these crises, we have to show some victories. We show people what is going on within the reforms of the Cabinet of Ministers, uh, what is going on within their own lives, how they can get information about, for example, online services without mm -hmm. paying bribes. Because, like an example, the problem of corruption. Uh, the, this problem is highly over, uh, over, over communicated, like there is a big problem of corruption. But let's say that it is not the problem of corruption, it is a problem of communicating corruption. Mm -hmm. Because the intention of government now is to overcome it, to create, to make the impact of human touch less, to make automatic uh, services by government and so to make the impact of corruption less. But nobody wants to talk about that. Nobody wants to talk about online services, for example, by the Minister of Justice or Minister of Interior. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to say about some uh, phenomenon of corruption. Well, and that's what we are doing. We are talking about concrete things mm -hmm. which government does to uh, make lives of ordinary people better and mm -hmm. easier. And I know there's a lot of coverage about Prozoro, for example, and some of the other mm -hmm. uh, things that have been done. But I think a lot of it, the issue has been on the speed of reform in the in the and setbacks in uh, when it has to do with with corruption. Um, and so, if we speak about uh, some of the things the Ministry of Information Policy has been doing, could you give us some examples of well, success? We have we have several specific functions. Mm -hmm. First is coordinating. Uh, different governmental bodies in promoting Ukraine. So we created a special commission, mm -hmm. some kind of multi-governmental uh, national uh, tourism organization, which uh, works in different uh, different directions, like public di diplomacy by a minister of foreign affairs, like uh, us uh, in creating a brand of Ukraine, like minister of culture creating some cultural uh, uh, ideas. Uh, we also uh, work with um, with um, the east of Ukraine, with mm -hmm. the, the controlled territories and, and uh, occupied territories, especially with IDPs. Mm -hmm. uh, so we print materials for them. Uh, we print a newspaper, which is called Donbass Inform, where people can learn where they can get some services, like mm -hmm. where, how can they get passport, how can they marry, how they can get pension, and so on and so forth. And how do people get copies of this? Because I do hear... It's freely uh -huh. distributed on the border of uh, region. Is, there, in, it is, also, is it also available online? Because we do hear issues with IDPs uh, not being aware or being able to find information about services. All this 
information is online, but mm -hmm. newspaper itself is not online be because it won't be easy to read this big like A3 format. Uh -huh. It is not easy to read it on mobile phones or even on computers. So, but we uh, print a lot of these copies and distribute mm -hmm. it freely on the in the region, so everybody gets the information he or she wants. Okay, and uh, speaking more about communicating with the citizens of Ukraine, one of uh, another issue that people speak about is uh, when it comes to increasing the cost of electricity, which is very uh, dear to people's hearts. How is the government working to increase its ability to communicate about the reasons for these increases, as well as uh, assistance available to people unable to pay? Well, this question is much more complex than just communicating with IDPs, for example, because it consists of the problem of the reform of governmental communications. Mm -hmm. Because the uh, governmental communications Ukraine, in Ukraine are very complex and they are very politically influenced. Yes. Every minister has his or her press secretary and these people uh, communicate only those things they think are important for the head of the minister. Uh, so that's why we work together with the uh, state secretary of the cabinet of ministers, with the, his, his team, on uh, creating some more independent system of governmental communications, uh, including the new website for cabinet of ministers, mm -hmm. which was uh, uh, opened like in the previous week, and where people can find services, where they can find answers, and where from where uh, communication departments of different governmental body of different officials can find information and communicate it. Oh, so this is a great step. And but it also needs a lot of time to, real, to bring into life. It's, it is not done in a week or a month, so some years. Well, and, and promotion of this and, and also letting people know that this is available, yes. that this new website is available. Yes, that's what we're doing. Wonderful. And what about, and we talked a little bit about communication with the IDPs. What also is being done with communication with people on Crimea? We have a standalone program, which mm -hmm. is called Information Reintegration of Crimea, and our Deputy Minister, First Deputy Minister, Manager Parr, is responsible for that. And we have a lot of events, we have a lot of uh, printed materials, so we have a lot of uh, international meetings which include the problem of Crimea, which includes the problem of uh, uh, people who live there and who need information about Ukraine. That also includes building a new TV tower near the border of Crimea, which includes also uh, work within the international organizations about human rights in Crimea, so the huge part of work of ministry, and I think Emine will talk about it much better than myself. Right. And what are some of the issues that uh, or setbacks that occurred in 2017 when it came to information, providing information or fighting Again. propaganda? Again, Were there yes. some issues in 2017 that, that the weren't resolved or that you didn't get as much success as you would like? Uh, I can't say that we uh, met some some unsuccessful stories this mm -hmm. year because we planned this year according to our possibilities. Mm -hmm. So everything we planned, we did and we finished. That's another thing that we couldn't plan a lot because we had not much money, we had not much resources, ministries, only 30 people working oh. here. but. Uh, as for the 2018, we have much bigger plans of uh, uh, helping uh, Ukrainian cinema, helping Ukrainian NGO projects, including history of Ukraine, including Ukrainian music. We have big, uh, ambitious uh, ideas to promote Ukraine on international TV channels. And we had this year, we had first step, we had a commercial uh, about Ukraine on CNN. Oh. So we would like to broaden this cooperation and to bring Ukraine not as some country with uh, uh, windmills and beautiful uh, nature, but also to show Ukraine as a modern economics mm -hmm. with good possibilities for investing, for coming here, for living here, and so on and so forth. So uh, can you speak a bit more about some of these international activities with the, the ministry has been involved in? 
Well, we have a commission on promoting Ukraine and a specific concept, strategy of promoting, uh, which includes not only tourism promotion or investing promotion, but also uh, educational, cultural uh, communication with other countries. And uh, we would like to, and we are, we are bringing some marketing uh, influence into these processes. So we have, uh, we, we do, research, we uh -huh. do research, we do focus groups and based, based on these results of research and focus group we suggest some vision of Ukraine for foreigners or for different target groups and we would like to sell Ukraine well, sell is not a very good word no, but we nice have summer, to yeah. sell Ukraine now for the world because mm -hmm. Ukraine is not for other countries, for other people it is not any other country than um, Poland or Hungary or any other country. So we have to show some specific things about Ukraine. Well, thank you so much for giving us this insight. Thank you for thank being you. us today. Today we were joined by Artem Bedinko from the Ministry of Information Policy of Ukraine. Thank you for joining us.